Hello Haskellings! Today I'm going to start by showing you how to use hlint, which is a linter for Haskell. Linters are able to go through your code and make suggestions to improve the format or the way you're writing your code. For example, if you have parentheses where you don't need them, it'll suggest that you remove them. hlint is quite capable of doing some quite complex analysis. For example, where you have two fmaps in a row, it can suggest function composition. It's also very well versed in the standard libraries. And when you have, for example, a cat maybes combined with a map, it will suggest the map maybe function. Using hlint can help you actually learn the standard libraries and better ways to do things. For me, flipconst is just as clear as this lambda, but I normally go with hlint's suggestions. Now that there's no more hints, let's move on to day 11. And it's another map problem, so this time, instead of using lists of lists, we're going to use a vector of vectors. As always, we have a quick look at our input file to see what the format's like. First we'll import our advent of code module, and then we use our custom interact function to read in the lines. We need to map across each line and then map each character in the line and convert those to a zero or a one by using bool composed with a comparison with the L character. Bool is defined in data.bool, so we need to import that. We have ourselves now a list of list of integers, and we'd like to convert that to a vector of vectors. So we use our L to V function twice to achieve that. Interestingly, we're going to be able to reuse our converge function from day seven. If you remember, converge will take a function, which we're gonna call step for now, and then the value that we're iterating over, which in our case is our map. When we reach a value that step can no longer change, then converge exits, giving us back that final value. That's going to be a vector of vectors, so we can convert it to a list of lists again, then for each row we count the number of occupied seats, which we're gonna designate with the number two, and then we sum all those counts. We're gonna write a helper function to grab the neighbors for each value, and we're gonna call that map eight neighbors. It will take a function g, and for each cell, it's going to tell g who the neighbors are, and g in turn will tell map eight neighbors how to update the vector of vectors. x will be the value of the cell itself, and the rules are spelt out in the problem description. Count two n's here is going to be the number of occupied seats in the neighbors of the cell in question. Okay, now we have to write the map eight neighbors function itself. It needs to accept a function like g, which is expecting to get a value and then a list of values for the neighbors and return back a result. Then we have a vector of vector of those values and then we return a vector of vector of results after that function has been applied to each cell. We need to map over each cell and we're going to use a function in the vector module called imap. Uh, first we should import the data.vector module. We're going to import that as qualified as usual. Because we have a vector of vectors, we're going to have to do an imap within an imap. imap takes a function of two parameters, the first being the index into the vector. We can grab out our x and y coordinates in this way, as well as the cell value i, and put them into a modify function. Let's have a quick look at the imap function itself. It's just like map, except it also passes the index to the mapping function. Let's write our modify function. It will take in the value and the coordinate, and it's going to have to somehow run f over the value and its neighbors. Let's write a function get that will get the value of one of the neighbors given the coordinates of the original point and the difference to the neighbor. 
we have to be careful because we might go out of bounds. So let's use the exclamation mark question mark to return a maybe. We can actually use the maybe monad to, to do this. So we can grab out the row and if the row is nothing, then we're going to actually just return nothing. However, if the row is a just value, then we can get out the cells value by indexing into the row itself. So get is able to return us a maybe value at each offset from the original value. So we can map get over its neighbors. But because it's a maybe value, we can use map maybe, which we learned about earlier. The neighbors will just be the coordinates of the neighbors relative to the original point. As I'm doing this, I'm already thinking about how this function could be generalized. For example, the neighbors could be passed in, and then you could have a version of this where you have the eight neighbors, including diagonals, and another one where you have the four neighbors. We have a compile time error because converge is actually not in our advent of code module. It's still actually within the 7a solution. So let's put that into our advent of code module. It's still not compiling because we forgot the v dot in front of the imap here. And also because we haven't yet written a v2l function. Let's put that in our advent of code module. It's just going to be an alias for the vector to list function. Let's see if that's the right answer. Uh, unfortunately it's not, so we must have a bug in our program somewhere. Ah, so it looks like I put in the numbers wrong for the neighbors. The, the last two should have their x and y coordinates swapped. So we should be able to check that. And we indeed have our first gold star. Part two will need us to modify our code. So it uses a line of sight type of algorithm instead of just the immediate neighbors. We should be able to adjust our map eight neighbors function to work with the line of sight type algorithm. Our modify function, which passes the neighbors to our f function, should instead pass the first one it sees. So we're going to change the get call there to get first. Once again, we're going to use the maybe monad here. And we're going to use recursion to find the first hit along that path. We get the value as before, dropping out here if it's a nothing. If the cell is currently unoccupied, we use recursion to get the next cell in that line. Otherwise, we've found the cell that we're looking for, so we should just return that. Note that because we're in the maybe monad, return is just wrapping the v in adjust. We seem to have an extra comma where we don't need one. So if we remove that and then update the name of our map8 function there, then we move on to the more serious errors. And in this case, it's because we're using equals equals on the v value. It's expecting us to add a constraint of eek a there, but I have a better idea. We can pass a predicate to map8 los to tell it what is considered an empty cell. This makes our code a lot more versatile without any extra cost. Predicates, which are unary functions that return a bool, are used very often in Haskell libraries. Well, we have a number, let's check that. And that's two gold stars for day 11. Until next time, happy Haskelling.